Hello, hello. Welcome, welcome. So what I'm doing now is for episode three, I believe I'll be going over fuel tank related items. So the uh, fuel tank was rusty from the previous owner. I believe he wanted to strip it down and uh, did not continue on. So it rusted as it was probably left outside. And uh, I go through the process of sanding it down. Uh, I show you how I've used like wire wheels and sandpaper. And then I go through a process of priming it because it's bare metal. So I use some etch primer on the gas tank. I also decided to do it uh, a few different ways. So during the process, I started spraying it black and I realized I wanted to raptor line it or rhino line it on the bottom uh, just for some extra durability. And I decided to do that. And uh, along the way, I do start to uh, take care of the hardware. The hardware is rusty as well. And uh, when I went to Buggy Warehouse, I purchased some uh, fuel lines and some brake lines. And so during that time I'm doing the fuel tank, I'm also replacing all the old uh, corroded lines that are um, needing to be replaced. I'll also go over a little bit of the engine compartment. Uh, I ordered some grommets and some fasteners on Amazon. They came in, so I plugged the firewall and used the uh, new clamps on the fuel lines. So I'll go over that. Pretty exciting for me, all these parts coming in uh, just constantly. So uh, as I go along, I'm just recording and trying to capture as much as I can on my phone. So please do forgive me if it's not continuously recording. It's really hard to do this and continue all the work. I'm just trying to get the hang of everything at this point, and hopefully I can bring you some more contact, content that is more quality. All right, so here I have the gas tank, and you can kind of see the before, and you can kind of see middle, what it looks like after it's been kind of uh, continued on with the uh, process of the wire brush. I've closed up the uh, ends there just for a little bit of safety, but yeah, that's uh, a lot of rust. I need to clean off before I can rubberize it. So coat one. After sanding, got most of the stuff off. It's pretty smooth. A couple of pitting areas that you just can't do even with the disc wheel. There's a lot of pitting, but we'll try to fill that in. There we go. So this is the second coat of the appliance epoxy color black. And it's gone on, but I'm a little bit uh, not so happy about the rust pitting. That I almost should have used a uh, primer filler or something or body filler on it to make it look a little bit nicer even though I sanded it uh, fairly well. And on the bottom is the Rhino so you probably wouldn't see the pitting if I sprayed it Rhino liner which I don't want to do. Um, so that's got a good texture on it. Might have to go back over it to get the gloss off since, uh, since some of the gloss got on the on the uh, non-shiny part. Other than that, uh, it's restored better than rust. That's for sure. That was a lot of work. This is the wax and grease remover I used on the gas tank. There is a 99.78327% chance that that is rust. Yeah. So that's the fuel line that's going from the front to the rear and there could be corrosion and rust on it as well so i'll have to inspect a little bit further in hopefully the line isn't compromised okay so what i'm doing here is drilling an inspection hole i thought about drilling it um three inches wide as another person has so you can basically stick their hand in there since the pedal system on the other side is a pretty big hole, um, I thought maybe I'd want to do the same thing, just a big hole there. 
but I think I'm just gonna do an inspection haul just to be able to stick a screwdriver in there and try to get the clutch cable on. Hopefully I don't have to drill another one to see through it. I'll be able to do it with just a long screwdriver or a hook. Um, I really don't want to deal with a, a bigger hole or doing a patch plate uh, like they did with four screws. So we'll see what happens. Hopefully I can get this thing to go through. It gets hot really quick and uh, makes it a little bit difficult to drill through. It's a pretty thick gauge. So I got my hole, but it's smoking. It's still hot. And the piece fell in, so I'm gonna have to fish it out and hopefully uh, no damage to anything in there. Okay, here I have, I believe, the right hardware for this. So the two bolts that lock in the um, pedal assembly. And then this is the adjuster for the brake which I believe goes right here. So if he didn't move this, then it should thread right in and be at the right place for the brake. I need to clean out these threads uh, just so it's not rusty. And I have no idea if this pedal assembly actually works well or not. So well, we will have to find out if this accelerator works. I actually don't know how to make it connect. It might connect here or here. So. I'll have to figure that out. And it's missing the, it's missing the pedal, the rubber pedal on it. And these are a little old as well. So uh, first things first, get these cleaned up so I can get the pedal system in. All right, so this is where the uh, bolts are at. They're a little bit better than what they were. They're a little shiny. I tried to shine them up a little bit, but uh, there's still some rust on there. Not too big of a deal. I'm not doing a full restoration, just trying to get this up and running. If I want to pull this out later, I can pull it out and have these replaced or dunked. What I got going on here is that is the fuel line, the hard line to the rear. And so uh, before I put the fuel tank in, I want to flush it out. And so what I've done is I've used some brake clean with a nozzle and a rubber nipple, a cap off nipple. I just poked a hole in it. And now I am uh, shooting the compressed liquid through it to clean it out. It felt like there was some resistance at first, so there might've been a little bit of debris. Now let's go see uh, the rust that uh, came out the other end. Turn the fan down a little bit here. Okay, you can kind of see all the debris at the bottom, all the rust uh, down there. That's collected. Uh, it doesn't look like a ton. I don't know why it was looking like it was uh, kind of stopped, but overall I've used um, about half a can, uh, some empty ones, like quarters, and I added that last one just for some uh, high blasting power, but other than that, um, I need to reconnect this line back to the manual fuel pump, so I'll probably put a new line. I need to. Uh, see how that's kind of routed behind this distributor, put that back around it, and then uh, take a length of hose and connect it. I have some new connection fittings. I hate these uh, worm clamps, they suck. So I probably will be replacing that, putting some better fittings. And then I've heard that this needs to be out of the way. So I'll probably mount this somewhere else, further away, and hopefully, um, it won't cause fire. Maybe I'll get a metal one um, after I get this up and running. It looks like there might be uh, already a lot of debris in here, so um, looks a little dark at the bottom. So uh, that's pretty much it. I will uh, uh, try to get this thing up and running soon. Um, there's still a lot to do with the electrical system. I haven't checked it out, so uh, it's going to be kind of hard to mount a battery when there's no floor. So 
I need to figure out at least temporarily get some patch panel in here or get on order the uh, the left and right pan and uh, get that situated so just for starting I just kind of want to see what's going on I might just connect the battery and have it laying on the floor or have it laying on a crate um, to get it going and see if the ignition works correctly uh, I still have the um, clutch pedal to do so I got it up and mounted but I cannot get the um, the clutch on and I haven't put the brake uh, I'm sorry the gas pedal line on the accelerator line on and I cut out the access hole to view uh, when you get the clutch line on um, I need some pliers to help it or persuade it I'm going to be probably loosening the clutch back there I really don't want to so I might mark it and then loosen it and give myself some more room to uh, then connect it so um, we'll see how this goes so I'm not really sure why those holes are there I'll have to look it up but I did get these things for the fuel lines and these for the holes on Amazon so let's see if uh, these things work okay so here's the left side uh, this one went in smoothly, this one went in smoothly, this one, uh, since it has a hump here, it's a little bit out of round, it still worked. On this side, it was oval, so the largest one kind of fit in there, and there's a little bit a hair of a gap just around the edges. I really do need an oval one, and look at that, spider! Okay, so here I have the tank, and I'm going to be putting it in soon. And I've already hooked up the uh, the fuel line to the bottom, and I'm about to be hooking it up to uh, the tunnel connection. So, just just trying to figure out which way I should do the um, what do we call that worm clamp or whatever you want to call it. Uh, haven't decided whether I'm going to do it down or up to gain access for later, or pull the whole tank and just get it from the top. Not quite sure. Either way, um, it's coming along, top one's tight, and I just gotta do the bottom one, and then drop the tank in and wait for the brackets to ship. This is what it looks like, tank in. So shiny black on flat black. That's pretty much what it's going for. I need one more, one more of these fuel bands, worm clamps. Um, yeah, so getting there. Fuel's connected down below. Probably down here. You can't see it anymore, but it's connected. So let's take a look at it with the light on. Okay, so there it is it's connected so it's coming out of the tube and going into the rear so that's pretty tall I wonder if there's some spacers might have to do that hopefully nothing leaks all right back on the brakes uh, I have all my master cylinder hooked up and everything in the uh, the reservoir side hooked up so um, I probably will put fluid in it as soon as I can take these off and clean them uh, make sure there's no uh, rust spots or the pads aren't falling apart like on the other side uh, just confirming that uh, I won't need to do something drastic uh, when I start bleeding so uh, I'll take this off I don't know if I'm gonna be able to get the rears off but this is the driver's side front that I need to check and it has this little uh, uh, speedometer cable so I have to remove this first probably by pulling back rotating pulling it off and then the cable should come out from the back uh, this one here should come out from the back I'm going to wrap it up right now with the ending on the brake drum and that will be the end of episode 3 on episode 4 I'll continue on with the brake system 
In fact, uh, when I get to one of the drums, there's a little surprise inside in one of the rear drums. And uh, during episode four, I will be bleeding the brakes, doing some MacGyver stuff, using a vacuum pump, and you'll, you can see what goes uh, right and what goes wrong uh, with my method. So uh, stay tuned for episode four, which will be coming out soon.